It's that time of the year, guys. Almost 2023. Where does the time go? But it is also a time for reflection. So looking back on all that we have gotten, Arrow on the Head presents the top 10 horror movies of 2022. Now, house rules as always. It is less important what number a movie lands on and more this list as a whole. Listen, there's a lot of good stuff out there and even if it didn't make this list, it isn't an indication of lesser quality. These just happen to be the entries that I connected with the most. So with that said, let's go. Number 10, Hellraiser. It's been 26 years since we last had a Hellraiser film in theaters, but David Bruckner's 2022 reboot is the first since Bloodline that has felt like a proper entry, even if it debuted on Hulu. With a new twist in the mythology, Hellraiser wisely focuses more on the puzzle box. Jamie Clayton is surprisingly solid in a role made iconic by Doug Bradley, giving enough of a change to make it her own while the Cenobites and Gore are a big step in the right direction. Now, to be honest, the main characters aren't very likable, and the story logic is a bit thin, but Hellraiser 2022 is a course correction that was sorely needed for this series. Number 9, Orphan First Kill. Now, this wasn't one I was exactly looking forward to. The original was a decent little horror flick. Somehow, we got a prequel with the same lead actress, Isabel Furman, 13 years later but leave it to the stylish and underrated director, William Brent Bell, for leaning into the ridiculous premise of Esther herself and giving us a wild, gory, and action-filled sequel. Far more tongue-in-cheek than the first, Orphan First Kill leans into the schlock and comes out with an entertaining prequel that I didn't know I needed. Number eight, The Black Phone. Director Scott Derrickson and writer C. Robert Cargill gave us the surprise hit Sinister back in 2012, and The Black Phone got that band back together. We're putting the band back together. Now putting Ethan Hawke as the grabber, a kidnapper and serial killer roaming the Denver suburbs in the late 70s. Based on the short story by Joe Hill, The Black Phone is a surprisingly tense and unique tale. Mixing the supernatural with the grounded nature of a flesh and blood killer, The Black Phone is a great genre film that isn't predictable and is the type of a unique single story horror fans have been asking for. Of course, Ethan Hawke steals the show. While Mason Thames as Finney naturally portrays the childlike innocent the role needs and holds his own against Hawke. Number seven, Barbarian. Now, this will indeed divide the internet, and just like Malignant, you must take a step back and view this from afar. The performances are on point, with Georgina Campbell as her commanding lead, Justin Long stealing the show, and Bill Skarsgård playing charming and suspicious so well that you can't help but love him. Besides some ludicrous character decisions, this hits all the right notes, giving us a horror experience unlike anything I've seen in years. Whether it works for you or not, Barbarian is a unique story that marches to the beat of its own drum, and that alone should be celebrated. It's a strange beast for sure, but it stands tall in a world full of remakes, sequels, and adaptations. If you can get into the movie's silly and hauntingly mixed tone, Barbarian is a fun ride worth taking. Number 6, Crimes of the Future. David Cronenberg's return to body horror. Set in a desolate future full of urban decay, the human race has evolved to where we no longer feel pain. Yet Saul Tenser, played by the excellent Viggo Mortensen, does. And he uses this pain and his ability to grow new organs to become an underground art sensation, with surgery becoming the new sex. It's a slow burn film that focuses more on world building over tight storytelling, but Cronenberg slips back into the subgenre he perfected like he never left. With an amazing set design, practical effects, and an unnerving tone throughout, Crime to the Future is a type of weird and eccentric story that I'm glad Cronenberg revisited. Number 5, Glorious. Seemingly at rope's end, Wes, played by Ryan Quantin, gets stuck at a rest stop. Only he's not alone. A locked bathroom stall with one stylized glory hole may hold the entire universe's fate. A low-budget, high-concept film that is both cosmically beautiful and darkly funny. Glorious uses its single location and builds an epic story around a being hidden behind a glory hole. And of course, J.K. Simmons and his smooth jazz voice add enough credence to the silly premise, giving us something truly special. Number four. Christmas, bloody Christmas. 
Now, I'm a sucker for some good Christmas horror. And to my surprise, Christmas Bloody Christmas ended up being one of the better times I've had all year. Think uh, House of a Thousand Corpses meets The Terminator. Writer-director Joe Begas brings us a grindhouse-esque bloodbath that gets crazier and crazier until its grandiose conclusion. Led by Tori Toombs and Robbie Reynolds, played by Riley Dandy and Sam Delich respectively, not only is the writing sharp and the dialogue witty, with a great Pet Cemetery 2 defense, I must say, but some of the best chemistry I've seen all year. Add in some over-the-top gore, an unstoppable robot Santa, played by Kubiak himself, I passed. And what do you get? An instant cult classic. Number three, Pearl. Set in 1918, Pearl, played by Mia Goth, dreams of leaving her abusive and isolated farm life. She plans on becoming a famous Hollywood actress, and nothing will stand in her way, giving us a heartbreaking old Hollywood drama that slowly turns into vengeful horror. From the music, the lighting, blocking, and color grading, Pearl is flawlessly molded into that golden era of Hollywood, with Ty West's attention to detail shining through each and every frame. But the real star here is Mia Goth, giving an Academy Award-winning performance, both chilling yet heartbreaking. Mia Goth gives Pearl her all. Number two, Hellbender. Set in rural upstate New York, teenager Izzy, played by Zelda Adams, lives with her mother, played by Toby Poser, makes music and goes for walks. Only when things start to change for her physically does she learn about her family's deep ties to witchcraft. Released on Shudder in February, Hellbender is the kind of low-budget indie filmmaking that gives me hope. Written, directed, and starring the Adams Family, no relation. Hellbender is an impressive coming-of-age witchcraft story that relies solely on the talents of the family. Clever, dark, and filled with some pretty damn good music, Hellbender is a testament to using your skill set to your advantage and what it looks like to put your passion front and center. And number one, Mad God. 30 years in the making, Mad God is a bad mushroom trip set in stop motion animation hell and an absolute masterpiece in filmmaking and storytelling. Created by Phil Tippett and was originally started when he was working on Robocop 2, an underrated sequel by the way. Kane. But it is a strange visual treat that is one of the most immersive experiences I've had. It's on Shutter if you haven't seen it, and I recommend you do. With its Lynchian quality, Mad God is worth seeking out and by far my favorite film of the year. Now, for the sake of balance, as Arrow on the Head is a family, I asked one of our main critics on Arrow on the Head for his top 10. So, if our main list didn't quite have your favorites on there, Tyler Nichols is here to share his. Tyler here, and we got a ton of awesome horror movies this year. My number 10 is Next Exit. Mally Elfman's debut film provides a ghost story unlike anything you've ever seen. Katie Parker and Rahul Kohli give phenomenal performances and will leave you thinking about it long after the credits roll. Number 9 goes to Barbarian. I wasn't sure what the hell was going on during half of this movie, and that's what made me love it so much. Mystery is hard to do in this day and age, and this one had me intrigued from the jump. And Justin Long just plays such a good asshole. Number 8 goes to a lesser known indie gem named Glorious. This two-hander really takes cosmic horror and mixes it with some great crude dark humor. And I mean, can you really get better than J.K. Simmons as a cosmic glory hole? 7 is a film that took the world by storm with Smile. I always love a good curse, and the curse of a smiling figure haunting you until your eventual suicide is enough to send shivers up my spine. But it's the fantastic execution by writer and director Parker Finn and the mind-blowing performance from Sosie Bacon that really sets this above other curse films like it. Number 6 would have to be Deadstream. Found footage is usually not my bag, yet this film managed to take the gimmick and make it a vital part of its storytelling and it's absolutely hysterical. Number five goes to My Best Friend's Exorcism. I'm not going to lie, I thought this movie would make a bigger splash than it did because I was absolutely blown away by this 90s take on exorcism. The special effects look incredible and it features some great performances from Elsie Fisher and Amaya Miller. And you gotta give it up for the Lemon Brothers. Four is definitely The Menu, which has Ray Fiennes providing his A-game and serving up an acting masterclass. 
add in Anya Taylor-Joy as a character, I never quite knew what to expect to do next, and it was a thrilling time at the movies. Number three is my favorite offering from Shudder this year, Sissy. This film goes through so many twists and turns that I'm not going to spoil here except to say that Aisha D impresses like no other. Seek this out and go into it knowing as little as possible. My second favorite of the year goes to the return of the Predator franchise with Prey. They managed to bring a fresh take on the Trophy Hunter and it rivals the original. I absolutely loved Amber Mid-Thunder in this role. Then my favorite horror film of the year was Scream 2022. This slick requel was able to play with the themes of the current legacy sequel trend while providing some of the most brutal kills of the franchise. And I won't spoil it here, but I loved the twist. And really, what's a Scream movie without a good twist? And those were my favorite horror movies of 2022. Back to Lance. And that's it, folks. Everybody at Joe Blow and Air on the Head wish you a happy new year. As always, we appreciate and thank you for your continued support. And we hope to see you on our continued journey in 2023. Hey everybody, it's Andrew from Joe Blow Horror Originals. 2022 was a great year for horror. While I really enjoyed Terrifier 2 and the new Scream entry, my favorite of the year has got to be X. Uh, but I went classic with my pick, and that is The Invitation. I love this movie, and not enough people saw it. It is a throwback to Hammer Horror Films of your um, great spin on the vampire trope and Dracula, and I truly, truly enjoyed this movie. Um, beautiful film. Great writing, really witty, neat concept where a uh, the modern tropes like social media and DNA tests that you send off your very essence in, in a way to who knows where can come back and literally bite you. As far as horror movies go, 2022 was an absolute banger of a year. Uh, we started off great with Scream and X, and then we got the Black Phone, Barbarian. Uh, there was one on Shudder that I really liked called Deadstream, Terrifier 2. Loved it too. Uh, a lot of people give me shit for even loving Halloween ends, but you know, whatever. But as far as horror movies go, uh, not only is it my favorite horror movie of the year, but it's also my favorite movie of the year, and that's Pearl, without a question. Loved it. Uh, highly, highly, highly recommend this movie. Hi, I'm Nikki. I like weird stuff. Uh, my favorite horror movie of the year is probably going to be Barbarian. That one comes from writer director Zach Krieger, who was also on Whitest Kids, if you haven't seen that. You should definitely watch it. Um, I'm going to throw you a bonus here. Um, the other one that was a big surprise for me was Adult Swim's Yule Log, a.k.a. The Fireplace. Jason Hewlett here, narrator for the best horror movie you never saw. And what the F happened to this horror movie? Barbarian is my favorite horror movie of the year. The movie that was sold to us wasn't the movie we got. But that was a good thing for a change. Justin Long gives a great performance. And it had many an artistic flair but not at the sacrifice of the horror or disturbing content. That makes it a winner in my book. 